Welcome to Long Video Sunday, and uh, today I want to do something a little different, and I'm sorry I'm overexposed. I could go like this the whole video, but, but whatever. Uh, it just, you know, whatever. Fuck it, who cares? Um, there's a vlogger on YouTube by the name of Paul Zigo. He happens to be my favorite vlogger on YouTube. He's been for a very long time. He doesn't make a whole lot of videos, but the videos he does make are quality. I enjoy them, and... Um, his most recent video, I think, is probably my, my favorite that he's ever made. Um, and I have a lot to say about it. And I, I thought what I could do is just play the whole goddamn thing, which, you know, first of all, it takes up time. And that's good on Long Video Sunday, because I try to make these Long Video Sunday videos at least 30 minutes apiece when I can do them. And his video is like 12 minutes long or something, and that will take up a lot of time. And then I don't have to talk for as long, and it's kind of a way to rip you off. But at the same time, I think that his words are a lot more poignant than what I could say today. Not more poignant than I could ever say, but a lot more poignant than what I could say at this particular moment in time. And I, I have some things I want to say to it. I have a response I want to make to it. But here's the thing, I haven't asked Paul if I could do this, I haven't asked him if it's okay for me to take this video and put it up in its entirety in my video, but I know Paul pretty well, I think, at least for, you know, some internet acquaintances, and I think that uh, he'd be okay with me doing this, but if he's not, I'm gonna have to take this video down. And if I do that, I don't want you guys getting pissed at Paul because I'm the one that didn't ask permission, so... If it gets taken down, please don't blame him. Blame me. Um, so without further ado, I think I'm just going to start off Paul's video and just, just run with that. And, and I'm going to afterwards give you my commentary, my response to it. And, uh, and maybe help you see things from, from my point of view a little bit as well as his. I wanted to make a cute little Christmas video tonight. You know, I've been I've been kind of in the Christmas spirit lately. It's been a couple of years since I made a, a, a Christmas video. I was in the mood, and something happened to me on my way home tonight that changed the nature of this video. Uh, I was driving uh, in the dark. It's been raining here uh, recently. I was driving on this kind of backcountry road, going, to be honest with you, way too fast. And uh, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's this giant puddle. And uh, I didn't even have time to tap my brakes. I, I hit this puddle going, you know, 65 miles an hour on a bumpy back road. And my, ve my vehicle started to hydroplane. And luckily, I've hydroplaned my vehicle before. I, I, I kind of knew what to do. But I came that close to losing control, rolling my vehicle, and possibly smashing myself, you know, into a tree and dying tonight. And for some reason, rather than, you know, being really nervous and the adrenaline pumping and really hyper aware of everything I was doing on the rest of my drive home, I had this epiphany. I had this epiphany about, uh, of all things, a video that I've been trying to make for literally three years. And, um, you know, the question that I get asked the most often on my channel, if you look at my, my front page, my channel comments, it's always, Paul, make more videos. Why don't you make more videos? More videos, more, 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 more. And this is the major reason why I don't make more videos. Because I've had this video lodged inside of me for like three years. And it's just stymied me. Every time I sit down to make this video, what comes out of me, if anything at all, is I'm, I'm so critical of it that I can't bring myself to upload it. And that is so contrary to what every other video that I've ever made has been. You know, 99% of the time, I see something that pisses me off. I see something that, that, that I find amusing. I, I sit down in front of my webcam. I blah, blah, blah. Whatever comes out of me comes out of me. I upload it to YouTube. The subscribers are happy. I'm happy. This video, for whatever reason, I've been so concerned with how this video would be perceived. And... I came to realize tonight that I've got to let that go. Uh, that the problem is, is that I've been trying to make this video for you. And I'm not trying to insult anybody with that. I'm not saying you're not worthy of a video. But this is a rare video that I need to make 100% for myself. This is something that I have to get out of me. Despite my fears that it's going to be trite or, or a retreading of shit that people are shouting on the internet every day, or just another fat, lazy white guy with a webcam mentally masturbating and beating a dead horse while not doing anything about the problems that he's bitching about. I've got to let all that go. I just have to get this out of me. I have to say it. And I have to say it in this 
weird semi-public arena of YouTube because I need it to be there for posterity. I need to know that this is out there. I need to know that one other person heard me say this so that I can be free of it. Growing up in the little town that I grew up in, this kind of little farming community that's half really hardcore redneck and half Mexicans, I've had to, you know, and, and then growing up into a 30-year-old man that likes to think of himself as a free thinker, I've had to slaughter a lot of sacred cows along the journey from little toe-headed redneck boy to 30-year-old man who's kind of a free thinker. Um, I've had to slaughter a lot of sacred cows, and by far, the hardest sacred cow for me to chain down to the altar and lop the head off of is this one. It has to do with me being lied to as a child, and, and I'll, I'll give you a little insight into this. If you grew up in the United States and went to a public school, you were lied to, too. One of the first things that I remember learning in school, and I have a pretty good memory of my childhood. I'm lucky with that. I have a lot of really clear, vivid memories of my childhood. And one of the first concepts I remember bringing home from kindergarten was that America was a superior nation. We had the best people. We had, we had the most freedom. We had the, 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 the best and brightest scientists. We had the best military. We had more access to health care and education than anybody else in the world. Everybody else in the world was climbing over themselves for the privilege to call themselves an American. America was the land of the free and the home of the brave. One of the first things I learned in kindergarten, what, what, was it the alphabet? No, it was the flag salute. And I remember feeling weird about it. I remember thinking how weird this is, that we're learning this, this weird little poem and we're holding our hands over our hearts and we're talking to this piece of cloth. But all those concerns were quickly driven out of me. Okay, this idea was just spiked into my skull as a child and it is it holds on. Up until this moment right now, it holds on to me. And it seems like, a, I know it, to some people it probably seems like a silly thing, but I have not been able to let that go. Every time that I open my mouth, critically, uh, uh, with regards to this country. Every time I feel like I want to criticize this country, there's this little niggling voice in the back of my head that says, how dare you, Paul? You know how fat and fucking lazy you are? You know how privileged you are? You know how awash in luxury that you are compared to 99% of the fucking world? Do you know you could have been a Somalian? You could have been born in Liberia where 90% of girls are raped before their 12th birthday and 90% of men at some point in their lives will have a limb hacked off and sold on a fucking meat cart in a slum? Do you have any idea how fucking privileged you are? How dare you criticize this country? How dare you sit there in your life of abject luxury and criticize this fucking great country? How dare you? But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I'm done carrying the water for this fucking country. I'm done. I can't carry the torch anymore. I cannot carry the torch anymore for this country. America is not the land of the free, nor is it the home of the brave. It is neither of those things at this point in history. Okay? America is a country of fucking cowards. Show me one instance of real bravery in this fucking country. And before you do it, don't throw the troops at me. Please spare me the fucking troops. If I hear one more person co-opt the fucking troops, I'm literally going to vomit right here on my, on my, on my webcam. I'm going to puke and you're going to have to watch it. Don't co-opt the fucking troops. I'm not talking about the troops. I'm talking about the 99% of Americans in this country that shit themselves with fear if a brown person gets onto the bus with them. Or they have to ride in a plane with somebody wearing a turban. I'm talking about the 99% of people in this country that, sub that are willing to submit themselves to a digital script search as a prerequisite to travel in this country. Can you believe that shit's going on? And don't start with me, Paul. It's not a strip search. It's, a, it's an x-ray. It's a backscatter x-ray machine. No, motherfucker. No, it's a strip search machine. Okay, you want, you want to go through a fucking machine and allow some TSA fuckwad to oogle your fucking Johnson and your balls and your taint and your butt crack? You want your wife going through one of those fucking things? Your little girl, your grandma, your mom? I don't. Americans line up around the fucking block to submit themselves to this shit. Where's the outrage? Well, there's been a little bit of outrage. Barely registers on the fucking radar. Barely worth mentioning. Barely fucking worth mentioning. I, America is a country of aggressively ignorant fucking cowards. 
People that are just willing to hand over their fucking civil liberties, lock, stock, and barrel, without even asking a fucking question. Without even taking the time to inform themselves. They're so stupid and so delud deluded and so caught in a quagmire that is their, their, their empty fucking infotainment filled lives that they just line up for somebody to tell them how they should feel. Please, Glenn Beck. Please, Keith Olbermann. Please tell me how I'm supposed to feel so I don't have to pick up a fucking newspaper or, or, or search the fucking internet. So I don't have to make my, my own mind up so I can continue to be stupid. Do you realize that, the Americans, I'm talking to you. Do you realize that in this country, being stupid is no longer considered to be a detriment? Being stupid is considered to be a virtue in this fucking country. We reward the stupid in this country. That's exactly the opposite thing that we should do. Stupid people in this country should be, should be fucking encouraged to not be stupid. There should be social pressure on people that are, that are willfully fucking ignorant to not be stupid. And instead, we, we reward people. We reward stupidity in this country. We reward people with multi-million dollar TV contracts so that all the other stupid people can sit around and watch how stupid these people are. Stupidity is a virtue in this country. I can't stand it. I can't stand it anymore. This is one of the hardest things that I've ever had to say, and I know how cliche this fucking sounds. I can't believe it's going to come out of my mouth, but I have to be fucking honest with myself. When I... And I, before I go on, I don't have any illusions of, 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 of utopia. I don't, I, don't have, I don't have any illusions that America could somehow be this perfect place. I, I realized long ago that there were a lot of problems in America in need of fixing. Okay, But what I do see in America is potential. I see the potential of this place. And when I see the potential and what America actually is, it breaks my fucking heart. It breaks my fucking heart to see a place like this that has so much fucking potential. Wasted. Absolutely fucking wasted by its citizens. It breaks my fucking heart. I am ashamed to be an American. My being an American is a source of shame for me. I take no pride in this country. And I don't mean to denigrate... Uh, you know, people that actually work to try and make life better for people. I don't mean to denigrate people that donate their time, donate their money, work ac actively to try and improve conditions for people in this country. But let's be honest with ourselves. While we're keeping it real here, folks, let's be honest with ourselves. Those people are a small fucking minority. For every one person that gives of themselves, there are at least a hundred fucking drooling retards. You know it and I know it, so let's be honest. I'm ashamed to live in this country. I'm ashamed to be an American. It's a source of shame for me. I'm disgusted when I, when I, when I turn on the TV. I'm disgusted when I, look, uh, when I look at the news. Let's talk about something that's in the news really quick. Something that people's, people's fucking, even people that would consider themselves to be enlightened. Their, their views are so fucking skewed on this. Let's look at WikiLeaks. I know, great, another WikiLeaks mention in a YouTube video. I haven't seen fucking 16 of these this week. <sighs> Fuck. Let's look at WikiLeaks. I see so much rank hero worship going on with regards to Julian Assange. Now, I'm not trying to denigrate what he does. I think that WikiLeaks is important. I think that Julian Assange is important. I'm, I'm thankful that he does what he does. But I see so many people hyper-focused. Oh, Julian Assange has been locked up, uh, you know, away, uh, pending bail uh, in, the, in the West Chestfordshire jail. Out, <laughs> you know what I mean? Meanwhile, the young man who actually allegedly leaked this shit, the young man who, if you read his email, uh, uh, tra the transcripts of the emails that he, that he wrote back and forth to the person he leaked this to, sounds like the very essence of a fucking whistleblower to me. Sounds like somebody who saw something that his country was doing, who saw, in fact, so many things that his country was doing that he couldn't stand to sit on that secret for the rest of his life. He couldn't stand uh, the fact that this type of shit was going on behind people's backs. He knew he had to do something. That kid, Bradley Manning, has been sitting in a fucking 24-hour lockdown, solitary confinement cell in Quantico, Virginia, for eight fucking months, and I barely hear his name mentioned on the fucking news. I barely hear anybody give a fuck about this kid. In fact, a lot of people want to see him lynched. 
a lot of people want to see this kid who saw the disgusting bullshit that goes on behind the scenes right under Americans' noses that Americans are too stupid and fucking deluded to see. He wanted to, he wanted to give them the opportunity to see that shit and they want to hang him for it. Or in my mind, almost even worse, they want to focus all their attention on Julian Assange, who's a mouthpiece. You know what, WikiLeaks is great, but WikiLeaks is missing one critical component. You've got to have access to information, and you've got to have an informed public who knows how to process information. And one of those things, I'll let you guess which one, is, 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 is conspicuously absent in this country. I'm sick to death of this fucking country. I'm sick to death. I'm, I'm heart sick. I'm heart sick. I'm ashamed. And, and you know what? If you're an American, you should be fucking ashamed too. You should be ashamed. You should be ashamed of the country that you live in. Oh, and uh, a Merry Christmas. <laughs> I find that video to be very stirring, and I get emotional watching it. I've watched it several times now, and I think Paul really cuts to the heart of what a lot of us feel in this country, the criticism that a lot of us have. But I do have some criticisms of his rant, and my intention in airing them is not to blunt his words or to um, invalidate anything he said, but maybe just to offer a little bit of consolation to people who feel the way he does and um, and the way I do really uh, maybe just offer a broader perspective and I know I'm probably not saying anything terribly original here but I think it bears uh, saying in light of what Paul just did and um, I, I could announce right now on this YouTube channel uh, that I am a communist and no one would do anything. I would not lose my channel over that. I would not, uh, I would not be relegated to the outskirts of society. I would not be despised and, and spit on and, and the, the bane of, uh, of, uh, of decent people everywhere. Uh, you know, but, you know, let's travel back to the, the, the McCarthy era and, um, and that witch hunt and, and say you're a communist then publicly declare your communism and you're you're in some trouble you are a pariah um, you know just let's look at the the rights of African Americans in this country you know black people a couple generations ago they weren't they weren't able to uh, to use certain businesses they weren't able to go they weren't able to travel freely around this country. Uh, a few generations before that, they couldn't vote. A few generations before that, they were outright slaves. So, there's been progress on that front. And there's been progress on the ideological front when it comes time to say, I am a communist. Which I'm not, by the way, in case anyone is so stupid that they think I'm actually saying that I am. Um... What about the uh, the gay rights movement? You know, 1960s, you know, barely any gays were out of the closet, and the ones that were were just considered, oh, that's the height of perversion. They're horrible people. They're like demons come to steal our children in the night. Very few people think like that anymore. Even in very conservative places like the South, where I have spent a good portion of my life, I don't really hear that sentiment. Most rednecks... They sit on their couch and they say, you know, I don't want them fags getting married. But they're not out there advocating that we go out there and kill them. I mean, I'm sure there some are. There are some that are out there on the, the very far fringes. But that's not a mainstream idea in America at this point. And we just repealed Don't Ask, Don't Tell a few days ago. That's a little bit of a victory. Now, social progress moves frustratingly slowly. But it does move, and it seems to move in a positive direction. Now, maybe if you're like me, you have the idea that when technology is moving this fast, social progress had better move just as fast. Because, you know, the stakes are a little bit higher when ballistic missiles and atomic weapons are involved. 
But the fact that we are moving forward is some consolation, at least to me. And you can say, these are dark times. These are terrible times when we have political prisoners like Bradley Manning rotting in, in jail cells for being whistleblowers, and we have full body scanners in our airports, and we have uh, homeland security propaganda in our stores. You know, it, it starts to seem like we're living in a nightmare, uh, some dystopia written about uh, to scare people. It starts to seem like we're living that nightmare, but don't you think the people who lived through Prohibition must have felt like they were living a dystopian nightmare? Don't you think that the people who lived through McCarthyism must have felt like they were in a dystopian nightmare? And they got through it. They won out. Reason won. It didn't win right away, but it did win. And I think it can win again. I don't think that the character of this country has changed so much since then that we can no longer fight for our rights. If anything, I think we're more able to do so. And Paul says that, you know, the furor over the TSA hasn't really been worth mentioning, and the furor over Bradley Manning hasn't really been worth mentioning. And maybe he's right, but... You know, I don't think that uh, there was a huge fur over drinking. I don't think there was a huge fur over uh, the communist thing. It was a gradual building of momentum. You know, these things tend to self-destruct. Prohibition self-destructed because people kept on drinking. It was ineffective. So... We, they did away with it. And um, McCarthyism went away because people started to realize, you know, there aren't really all that many communists out here, and they're not really trying to do what these people are telling us they're trying to do. It took the people a long time to realize that. It took them a long time to look past their fear, but they did it. And that went away. And I think all this craziness right now is all due to this, this war on terror. But, you know, I think attitudes towards that war on terror are shifting. I think people look at these new measures a lot more skeptically now than they used to. And one day, the tide is going to turn, and people are going to say, you know what, this whole terrorism thing, it's just been trumped up. You guys are just using it as an excuse to make rules. And I think you're just going to see all those rules get repealed in one fell swoop. And maybe that sounds crazy, because we're living in the nightmare. But it's happened before. There is a historical precedent. And I think it can happen again. If we continue to spread awareness, we continue to propagate the simple idea that the terrorism threat is overblown, and that all of these rules all of these regulations, all of this bullshit is just designed to control us. Not to prevent terrorism, but to control the people. If we continue to disseminate that idea, not just amongst ourselves, but to the people who vehemently disagree with it, if we go out there and we change one mind at a time for long enough, all this shit will go away. And that includes right after some big terrorist attack. If another big terrorist attack happens, we've got to be right there out at the forefront saying, yeah, but how long has it been? You don't think this country's strong enough to handle one terrorist attack every decade or so? Do you guys really still think this is a big problem when it takes them this long to mount any sort of offensive against us? Propagate that idea. Get it out there. Get it out there with the people who don't want to hear it. Make them think as you do. That's how social change happens. And I think disappointment in your country is the first step towards improving it. 
So don't let anything tell you, don't let anyone tell you about American exceptionalism or we're number one or any of that shit. Because that idea is the most dangerous one of all. It needs to go away because if you think you already are number one, why would you strive to be number one? We should be striving to be the best country, not lying to ourselves and telling ourselves that we already are. And that's my take on Paul's video. And um, I hope that maybe you guys learned something watching this, or maybe I at least stirred something in you, or Paul stirred something in you, that makes you want to go out and change something. Even if it just means changing one mind. Just one.